In Pit Lane is proudly brought to you by Dino Tech by Dino Dynamics. For your nearest workshop, visit our website. And with the support of the Ramada Resort, Phillip Island. Welcome back to In Pit Lane. Well, as we said, our guest, guest tonight is the CEO of the Confederation of Australian Motorsport, Eugene Arocca. And as we said last week, we uh, we have Formula 4 coming into Australia, a new FIA beginner's uh, level, uh, entry level for open wheel category. And uh, as we found out last week, not everybody is 100% uh, behind it, but we'll find out about what it is and why it's being introduced to Australia with our guest, Eugene Arocca. Eugene, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Brett. It's a pleasure. Cams obviously thinks that the, the answer is Formula 4, but what was the question? Well, the question really is, what have we done to date that justifies um, confidence in the government and in our industry that we've got a, an elite driver's pathway? And the simple answer to that is we haven't really had a very good pathway. We haven't had a very good development program on one view. The Cams Foundation has done some wonderful work behind the scenes. But when the Australian Sports Commission is challenging me and Cams to come up with a high-performance pathway, the edict, if you want to call it that, from the FIA is perfect timing. Here's a Formula 4 car, uh, you know, single-seater chassis, monocoque, uh, and uh, it fits what we believe to be a good gap, or the gap that exists between karting and the next levels of motorsport. F1 is undeniably the biggest part of our motorsport. It attracts more eyeballs, generates more commercial opportunities. If we can make the pathway into that particular element of the sport easier, there's other side benefits that happen as a result of that. So for us, it was a combination of the Australian Sports Commission asking us to come up with better options, the FIA offering an option, an affordable entry level for young carters, and um, you know, the board made the decision based on all the information available for it, and therefore the answer to the question is, we should do it because it's good for motorsport. So you said we needed a, that beginner's... Yeah. And why, why didn't Formula Ford fit that bill? Well, I think um, the mood around the world is that Formula Ford is becoming, um, uh, in some cases, unaffordable. We've heard of engines costing up to twenty or $30,000. There was a competitive element around the actual teams de you know, developing the engines and the cars more than the actual drivers. There was a disparity in terms of the talent that was being you know, funnelled through Formula Ford. Um, and to, quite, and to, be, to be honest, there wasn't a consistency across the world. We've now got a situation where some nine countries in 2015 are going to be having a Formula 4 championship with a basic level of consistency. The old wings and slicks, I've spoken to carters, they say getting out of a cart into a Formula Ford is like steering backwards in some cases. And so, you know, there's been this general mood away from Formula Ford. We also found that it was costly and expensive to run in this country. So when you almost gifted a category from the FIA with all the commercial rights that attached to it, and they actually encouraged the ASN, CAMS, to run it, it seemed like us to be a very good decision to make. And so I think time will tell, but Formula Fords are, on one view, becoming historic. They've been around for 50 to 50 odd years, 45 odd years, um, and even Formula Ford has walked away from it. I saw a quote from a Formula from a Ford uh, representative in the, uh, in the United Kingdom saying basically Formula Four is the way forward, and they're behind that. What about the uh, you released a letter a couple of weeks ago <laughs> regarding the Formula, which which upset a lot of people. I mean, we had Andrew Sill on the program last week who said. You know, we've been working hard on this. We've been doing our best to, to run. We give up a lot of time and, and effort, put a lot of time and effort as volunteers to, to keep this national series going and then to get attacked like this by the CEO of our organisation, CAMS. Um, they're not happy about it. What Do you regret yeah, making those comments? I'm not going to have our brand uh, 
I was going to say an, un an unsavory word. I'm not going to have our brand trashed. Um, we've supported Formula Ford in coming up with a national series. We've been you know, compliant. We've been trying to help them as best we can. We've made it very clear that it is not our preferred pathway. They have continued to spruik that it is the best pathway and been critical of camps. And as I said, I'm not going to sit here and have our brand trashed by people who have a commercial or other interest in a particular segment of the sport. I keep coming back to we try to make decisions that are good for the whole of sport not for a particular category. And the off-roaders and the rallies and others who aren't necessarily single-seater focused, they're going to say, is this good for our sport? Daniel Ricciardo is good for our sport. That filters right down. Everyone gets a clip. From grassroots, we're now going to have Ricciardo's rookies, Ricciardo's races, programs designed at, at grassroots level, run by clubs getting kids into the sport. We're going to work with karting to get them more active in terms of getting more kids into the sport and feeding up. So I try to make decisions, or we try to make decisions that are best for the motorsport industry or the motorsport, organi or the motorsport um, fraternity. In the course of that debate, when we get attacked, we're not going to sit back. CAMS doesn't sit back anymore and just simply, oh, we're going to cop that. We have a right to defend ourselves and if we're being criticised unfairly, we had members of the Formula Ford fraternity doing their own numbers. Well, quite frankly, they haven't had a great history of making their own numbers work in the past. So from our point of view, uh, we'll defend ourselves when we feel we have to and be argument that how dare the CAM CEO attacks a member, yet they can have pot shots at me on social media. Um, we'll tolerate that to a certain point, but we have to stand up for ourselves. The other interesting thing that we got from Philip Island on the weekend from a lot of the, from a lot of the categories is they said, we, we don't mind, Formula 4 might be a great idea and all the rest, but what they're concerned about is, is the fact that CAMS is actually running this uh, from you. Now, you're buying, you're buying 20 cars yep. and going to lease them out. Where does the money come from for that? Well, we've been a responsible organisation run with good governance and we've got a war chest like the AFL has got and like Cricket Australia has got and when appropriate we can invest that money for the benefit of sport. That's why the AFL went and spent $100 million on the Gold Coast Suns and Greater Western Sydney. We have the advantage of good governance. That wasn't popular with everybody either. No, but it's for the good of the sport to grow the sport in areas where it needed to be grown. So our, our view was that to invest in buying the cars, to keep the asset, to control the vehicles and have that absolute control <coughs> for us, <coughs> excuse me, was a no-brainer. And so, again, when we have members saying, how dare you spend our money? Well, we've been pretty judicious with their money over a long period of time. We own our own national office. You know, we've, we've done and made commercial decisions which we believe have been judicious and well thought out. We stand by this decision. We are ultimately accountable for this decision. So at the end of the day, if this is going to help young drivers progress up the sport into the international level and the local level, it's got to be good for Australian motorsport. What if it doesn't work? Well, who, like everything, who wears, who wears the, the it's cost? the same way that um, we, when we sold the, uh, our right to V8s. It didn't work in the long run. We'd now be sitting on an asset that would be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. It's a bit like the AFL selling off the grand final. Um, decisions are made, history is written, you move on. Fortunately, CAM is reasonably well run without being too modest, and we're responsible. And if we don't, and if we don't believe it'll work, we're not going to continue to invest good money after bad. But all of the workings we've done, the talk in the industry is absolute excitement. V8s, our best friends, they are working closely with us to make sure that this is also successful. What interest have they got in Formula One? Arguably none, but they want to see a clear pathway. An obvious side effect of that will be talented young drivers getting into V8s getting into rally. So from our point of view, the key stakeholders are absolutely behind this. Well, we'll get on to more of it in just a moment. We're going to take a break now, but when we come back, we'll have more from our special guest, CAM CEO, Eugene Rocker. You're watching In Pit Lane. We'll be right back. Welcome back to In Pit Lane. Our guest is the CEO of the Confederation of Australian Motorsport, Eugene Rocker, and we're talking Formula 4. Eugene, we've spoken about the effect on, on Formula Ford, but let's talk about the other major category in Australia. Our premier open wheel category supposedly is Formula 3. That's the Australian Drivers' Championship for the CAMS Gold Star, which was the most prestigious award in, in, in Australian motorsport for many, many years. Talking to some of the guys at the recent round at Phillip Island, there was a lot of confusion because they were sort of saying, well, OK, we're, we're at the top level and at the end of next year they will be running around in the Shannons round in front of, you know, virtually no crowds. At the end of the year they'll get the Cairns Gold Star but pretty much nothing else. If they actually go drop backwards, 
they're getting into this category that's going to have V8 supercar crowds, V8 supercar television, and a prize which we haven't got to as yet, of up to $250,000 in value. Why should people go stay in Formula, Formula 3 rather than move back to, uh, to yeah. Formula 4? It's a good question. And uh, we have spoken to Ian Richards, as you know, he's very instrumental in the Formula 3 category. Um, we personally believe that a very good Formula 4 should help Formula 3. We all know that they're struggling a little bit with their grid numbers, and that's been an issue that's been present for a while. The simple fact is they're probably not going to get onto the calendar of V8s if they don't get more than 10, 12, 13, 15 cars. We have continually said that if you've got a strong F4, that should have a flow-on effect into F3 because all those kids that are being produced by the academies through the, through the, uh, the camps, through F4, will want to continue in some other category if they still have a passion for single-seater. So I can't predict the future, but we are absolutely committed to continuing to support F3 as best we can in the circumstances we got. We don't control F3, we can only support them. Um, we will control F4, and that is an element of development that is the next step into F3. Um, time will tell. I can't give any guarantees or warranties about how that'll play out, other than to say we'll continue to talk with Ian and his people and, where possible, we'll, come, we'll go into bat for them. But it, there is a bit of irony about kids getting into Formula 4s on the V8 calendar and the guys in the Formula 3s are at the Shannons. Um, that's just the popularity of the F4 in the eyes of the key stakeholders. So why did the decision to run with V8s? I mean, surely with the, with the tele cost of television and all those sort of things, it would have been you know, even cheaper and more affordable if you'd have run Formula 4 and perhaps less pressure on the young people involved by running it, say, with the Shannons we're, uh, series. We're very good negotiators. Um, the fact is that the V8s wanted us on their calendar. Uh, the fact is the FIA encourages a national championship to be on the premier category, on the premier calendar. Um, and the fact is that we've been able to do a deal with our colleagues at V8s which they see the upside of Formula 4 and that's played to our advantage. So why wouldn't we put, expose young kids, 15, 16, 17? No different than when 15, 16, 17 year olds play AFL ahead of time sometimes. Get a taste of a big action. Get some sponsors to support you. Get on the main game. Get on to the other television programs that support V8s and uh, the Grand Prix. So from our point of view, if you get an opportunity, you don't just simply say, oh, well, you know what, we're going to go back to the Shannons. We want to continue supporting Shannons, but um, if with V8 support, and James Warburton has been wonderful in his support of this category, as has his other teams, as the teams under him, um, we're going to take the opportunities that are presented to us. In fact, should be to the advantage of these young, aspiring, elite athletes. You mentioned, uh, well, we mentioned before, the, the prize up to $250,000. It's up to, and yep. you've said that it's not going to be cash for approved... Uh, yeah. approved pathway. What are those approved pathways and what what exactly are people going to get in terms of up to two? I mean up to 250000 yeah. could be $7.50. No, um, our commitment is that if there are 15 cars on the grid there'll be up to 150 and if there are uh, up to 20 cars on the grid there'll be a quarter of a million dollars at the disposal of the winner who has to be an Australian, has to be in a certain age bracket, who will consult with us on their desired course over, either locally or overseas and will determine whether or not that is what we believe to be in their best interest. We are actually employing people who have got expertise in this area. Cam McConville, Carl Reinler are going to be responsible for our motorsport development. They'll be forming relationships with categories overseas and in Australia. We will work with those categories to find the best way for these young gentlemen and, and ladies to get into the sport. So it's a consultative phase. Um, we don't want to wave a big stick, but we want to see these kids um, develop on the best opportunities that are provided to them. So. I can't answer which ones they are. Formula 1.6, 3, 3.5, who knows? But we're certainly going to be doing a lot of work in the next six months to give them the options under which they can devote that money. On, a, on another topic, uh, I know that our international viewers would, uh, on our YouTube channel, would be it would be remiss of me not to mention that uh, come February we have this fabulous uh, growing international event at Bathurst, the Bathurst 12 hour. It has just grown spectacularly well. V8 supercars have now decided that they're going to have their season launch, their test day and possibly a round of the Dunlop series on the same weekend in the same state. Um, how has CAMS allowed that to happen? Well, we don't control the calendar. Um, we've never, in my time, certainly had that capacity. Um, one of the uh, what byproducts of allowing other operators to run our sport 
Um, you reckon the AFL would allow this to happen? Quite simply, it doesn't because it controls the calendar, it controls, controls the venues, it controls the product. We are a regulator or have been a regulator for a long period of time and there are commercial interests that work outside us. And so when this clash happened, James has assured me that he expects it to be a one-off because of a clash with the um, opening of the International Cricket Cup uh, in, in, in Sydney, I think it is, and the clash would have been such that they decided to move their program one week forward. He claims that he's not going to be doing it in 2016. Um, on one view, it's a bad thing. We've got to try and find extra marshals and extra officials. On the other thing, one's happening in the C essentially the Sydney CBD, one's happening two and a half hours out of Sydney. Um, on another view, it's a great thing for sport to have this competitive interest. We can't resolve it. We don't want to end up in the courts. We don't have the authority. We don't have the power to interfere with commercial operators doing what they do. So as much as James O'Brien might call me and as much as James Warburton might call me, they'll either work it out themselves or it'll just play out the way it will. Well, good luck with the Formula 4 and good luck with the Confederation of Australian Motorsport and, uh, and, the, and the sport over the next few years. Um, we could go on for ages, no, no doubt, <laughs> but uh, we've run out of time for now. Eugene Rocker, thanks again for joining us in Pit Lane. Thank you for having me and thanks for your support. More power, better fuel economy, a cleaner, more efficient engine. They're just a few of the advantages of having your car tuned on a Dynotech Dyno. To find your nearest Dynotech workshop, go to dyno.com.au. Dynotech by Dyno Dynamics.